What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Robbie again. Today we're working on the Miata once more, once more. And what we're doing today is replacing the wheel bearings on those in this car. If you need to replace your wheel bearing, this is what you need to do. I will show you step by step how to do that. It's extremely easy and anybody can do this. Now the reason why I'm replacing it is because it's wobbling a little bit. It's making weird noises when I drive the car and it needs to be replaced. So first, first things first boys, what you need to do is remove your wheel. That's gonna be quite easy. Just remove your lug nuts and take out the wheel. Secondary, you need to remove this caliper from the car so you can get your actual, um, what do you call this? Uh, your rotor out of the car. To do this, you need to, replay, uh, to remove these two bolts. This one and that one right there. Those are 14 millimeter bolts. Back those out and then slide the, cal uh, the caliper completely off and hang it somewhere on the car so it's out of the way and it's not hanging by the line. After you have removed your caliper, I just sat it right on top over there. You can uh, zip tie it or do whatever you want. You should be able to slide this rotor completely off right away. Now mine is not seized, but if yours is seized, just give it a whack with a hammer on this part, not on this part, on the shiny part. You wanna always give it a whack here and it should break loose and you should be able to just slide that guy completely out. Now this is the wheel hub that we're gonna be replacing today. The, um, we have to remove this little guard here. This is actually a cap, as you guys can see right there. That's actually a cap that has to be removed. So get a get a flathead here and just uh, make put it in between here and just pop that cap off so you can expose the axle nut that's in here. Now this car is obviously a rear wheel drive car. There is no axle nut, so but there will be still a nut onto this here. So you have to remove that nut. Then you can take this whole hub here, which this is called the hub, and this here is called the spindle assembly or what you want to call it. Now this is the hub. Some cars have the hub with the spindle together and things like that, but I, I believe that most cars, you can just remove this whole um, hub here. Now you can do just the hub, you can do the bearing, or you can do the hub and the bearing. I'm doing the hub and the bearing because it was literally like $15 more and you get a brand new studs and you get the hub, which is this is this part right here, and then you got a new bearings obviously inside of the hub already pressed and everything you don't have to deal with it so that's it i'm just going to go ahead now and pop this cap off show you guys what it looks like under there and then we'll get this hub off this is what it looks like after you remove the little cap there's the axle nut that i was speaking of now it's already been hit here so you guys can see there's a little notch you have to bend that notch out in order for this bolt to come out in order for you to be able to pull the, the hub out because that's what holds your hub in, this bolt here. So uh, stick a screwdriver here and just start tapping it and straighten that out so you can uh, be able to remove that bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, this is what it should kind of look like. I can kind of see I cleared it. There's still a little bit there, but I think that's gonna be fine. Uh, with the amount of force that I'm gonna apply on this thing in order to get it off, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. Now, you can get yourself a impact, impact gun if you have one. That'll be easiest way to take this off. Um, I believe it's a 29, it is a 29 socket. So you have to have a 29 millimeter socket to get this nut off here and get a very long breaker bar. Now if you don't have a very long one, go rent one. Or um, if you have a, a jack like that, just use the handle for more leverage to get this nut off. Now this one you don't have to press on the brakes or anything, it's not gonna rotate or anything because this is not an actual axle, it's just there's a shaft on the actual spindle which this bolts too. So this will not spin. If this was a rear um, hub, you would have to hold the brakes or put the e-brake on or something so this thing doesn't spin and even so it'll probably still spin a little bit. So having an impact will be much easier. I do have a Milwaukee impact. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, use that to remove that nut and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Let's see if I can get it on the video too. There he goes and we're about to smack it. One, two. And there she goes, completely off. And let's see. Oh, look at that. Mine slides right out. I don't even need a puller or a slide hammer. And you can see the play. See that play, guys? That should not be playing like that. That's bad. This, if this one is, this is the one that was the bad one. So you can see how much play I have in the hub and that should not be the, like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy out and then slide the new one in. Okay boys, just to explain, mine came out super easy. I could pull this thing by hand. Now if yours doesn't come out by hand and it doesn't work, 
Try to um, hit, it, hit it with a hammer once, once or twice here on the sides and see if it'll come out. Now if it doesn't come out still, then you're gonna need to get yourself a hub puller, which kind of looks like, let me show you guys real quick what it looks like. All right, kind of looks like this. Uh, so basically there's this, and then it just grabs around it. it. This is not for this specifically, but I'm saying it's it's similar situation. They're just like these clamps that kind of open up and stuff. I don't have one here because I didn't think I would need one and I have a different one that has just a slight hammer. So it's one of these type of deals and these little claws here will grab onto each corner of this. Uh, there will be three of those little claws. You can get those from any AutoZone or any O'Reilly store. I'll put a picture up on over here somewhere on the video so you guys can see what it looks like. So you would basically screw this, um, this bolt here all the way down, which will touch this, which is your actual shaft. And then you guys can see it has like a little nipple and that'll go into the groove here. And then as you're screwing in and pushing, this is pulling out the actual hub. And that's the way to pull it out of the car. All right, and here's a new one. I cleaned out the shaft. Let's see if it will just go straight in. Come on, baby. Get in your hole. Come on. Wait, wait for it. Let's see if it'll go in now. Try and do this one hand and film this one time. Oh, there it is. It slid right in. And you guys can see right now once I put the once I put the nut in, there will be no play whatsoever. But she is looking nice and spins really nice and freely. So alright, let me get the nut back on and uh, send it. Alright, there he goes. I put the nut back on and now if you guys can see I'm trying to wiggle this side to side and it's not moving anywhere and it's nice and smooth now. I'm pretty sure the right is going to be much better as well. Now you got, you're got you going to have to hammer this little notch back down into the little groove so get yourself a screwdriver and start tapping that down with the hammer so you can uh, this is basically like a lock so this nut does not come loose while you're driving and things like that. All right after you're all done with this you grab your rotor back up. If you have any fingerprints on it just make sure you wipe those off or wipe the rotor off with uh, with some what you call it uh, brake cleaner and stuff. Um, I've seen some people actually add some anti seize on the opposite side of this, um, but I'm planning to replace these brakes very, very shortly with some slotted rotors and stuff. So for now, we're just gonna send it without any anti seize. Plus, the hub itself comes with some oils and stuff, and it's still brand new, so it's it'll be fine for now. So I just put the rotor in, as you guys saw. You gotta get the two bolts, which is one on top here as I showed you earlier, this guy. And then there should be one right there on the bottom as well that's uh, being held. So screw those in, tighten them up pretty well. Those are 14s and your caliper should be good to go. All right boys, and this is what it should look like once you have everything installed back in. All you have to do from this point on is literally put your wheels back on and you're finished completely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, and actually before I do that, I'm actually gonna put my guards back on. Even though some people don't put these guys back in, these are very good to put back in because you don't want rocks and dust and stuff like that to go inside here, because that's where your bearing is. Even though that nut has a pretty big washer, still dust and little rocks and specks can go back there and it can ruin your bearings. So always get these and put them back on. Just basically just gotta tap them back in with a hammer, that's all they are. And if yours are damaged a lot, then get yourself some new ones. They're probably gonna be like five bucks for both sides or something. So if you don't even have them, then just send it. It's a Miata. This was a short video, boys, but I showed you how to replace your front wheel hub assembly on your 1990 to 19, I believe 98. I think it's all the same exact crap. So um, literally, this is very easy job. Anybody can do it. I literally did this whole thing in about 30 minutes total time. Me lifting the car up, taking the wheels off. Yes, I do have a lift. It's much easier for me, but it wouldn't be that much easy, uh, that much harder for you guys even if you use the regular standard jack. So jack up the car, remove the wheels, remove the caliper, remove your rotor from that point on. Um, get your little guard for the well for the nut off, the little guard that I put back in in the center. Take your nut off, put the new hub in, slap everything back together, and that's pretty much it. So thanks again for watching this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys it helped you guys out on how to do your own hubs and stuff. So you're gonna have to spend a lot of money at mechanics and things like that. Um, all it took for me was about 30 minutes, like I said. So don't go and spend money on mechanics when you can do it yourself. 
Um, it's not that scary of a job. I know it sounds crazy, but it's not that scary. Now, if you did have to just replace a bearing and you don't want to replace the whole hub, if you want to be a little bit cheap, then you would need a press, one of these guys here to press your bearings out. And it's not gonna be that easy to do so. I'm not exactly even sure if you need a puller or an actual press. I believe it's actually some sort of a puller because it looks like there's two bearings smashed next to each other or you just push on one side and they just both slide out. But anyways, I suggest for about $10 more, buy the whole assembly like this. You get brand new studs and stuff and it's much better for you guys to do. So um, both of these are completely shot and bad. You can see they're just moving inside and stuff. That's a bad one. And this one here, it's also flapping around and stuff. So no good, complete garbage. Get yourself new hub assemblies. Don't deal with presses and things like that. All right, enough talking. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one where we're still gonna be working on this Miata. As you guys can see over here on top in the engine bay, it looks quite a bit different. So stay tuned for future videos while I'm gonna show you guys what's happening under that hood. Thanks again. See you guys the next time. Don't forget what's behind you doesn't matter. You